I was 12 when I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, but I just learned to be resilient. I was diagnosed probably 12 or 13 years ago, but I'm a prime example of it. There is hope out there. Lucy and I have a lot of connections. Our families both cottage together up north. Um, a couple personal interests, including hockey, and we've both been uh, diagnosed with Crohn's or UC for many, many years now. And then we got together, we met, and uh, it was the best thing. We met to meet soulmates. <laughs> right. My buddy. Honestly, it was, it was immediate connection, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we understood each other. When I was younger, uh, the pain was devastating. There were times I wanted to give up because you don't know what's going on and you feel broken. It was totally in the closet. My parents felt a bowel disorder was embarrassing. They never told anyone. Michael, my husband Michael, if you could imagine, he dated me when I had a colostomy bag. That's a special person. He saw past all the illness and he was wonderful. But I know that he was strong for me. I've had 15 surgeries. I don't think people understand the fear your spouse goes through. He was totally petrified. It changes your life. You can't live the same way you used to. Um, you don't eat. You're in a lot of pain, but uh, yeah, you got to stay positive, right? A couple of the doctors saw me and were like, uh, we got to chat with this guy because he does not look good. Thank God for this event and those doctors. I went to see Steve in the hospital. I looked at him and wow, the feeling I had come over me was just as if I was lying in that position. Yeah, I'd lost 70 pounds. I was, I was leaking sepsis out of that giant abscess. People are scared and grossed out by it, right? And they're putting on masks and gloves. Lucy hopped right on my bed, patted my leg. I was like, you know what, everything, you'll be fine. I just could understand what he was feeling and the fear and she just looked me in the eyes and shot me straight and just talked me off the ledge. And I honestly don't know if I would have made it without it. So, Lucy, thank you You're so welcome. much. I've gotten my entire life back. So there's, there's no words. I mean, I sit in traffic smiling like a lunatic, waving at people like, isn't this amazing? Yeah. We're, we're alive. I just can't believe the turnaround I've had in a matter of months. In October, we had our son, little Dylan. And when he smiles, it's everything in the world disappears. But my biggest fear is still to, uh, to pass on this disease. He smiles. He smiles. Look at those cheeks. Yeah. So. I get very emotional. Every, every time he passes gas or you open a diaper, <laughs> it's something that never leaves your mind. Do a little walk. <laughs> Ready for the gutsy walk? There is nothing yeah, worse than a mom having to watch her child live with this illness, and I hope to God they never have to go through what I did. My eldest is Matthew. He's had signs of IBD since he was about 18. He's 15 years older than his brother and sister. He spent a lot of time with me in Mount Sinai, so he was always afraid of what was going wrong. And unfortunately, he's been diagnosed with Crohn's. So there's a project now, the genetic testing program is dealing with what causes the disease. There's a good chance I wouldn't be sitting here today if not for the medical advancements that have come from nights like this and the GEM research project that we're all involved with. Places like this are where our hearts open and we're so close. If we could just raise more awareness for research and more funds, I believe it's just around the corner to find a cure for this illness. Genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, I thank everyone who's here tonight, everyone who's been here in years past. You're responsible for saving my life, and my son got to meet his father because of it. So thank you.